Hey guys, welcome to DLM Christian Lifestyle. I'm Daniel and if it's your first time here, subscribe and also click that notification bell so you won't miss any of the next videos. Now, on this video, this is going to be the first testimony video. And there's been a lot of you that ask me, hey Daniel, how did you become a Christian? Tell us your, your story, even on the other channel, the DLM Model Lifestyle channel. So I thought, okay. It's time to tell you guys my story of how I became a Christian and how it really changed my whole life. So let's get to it. All right guys, now to tell you how I became a Christian, I need to go back to where it all started and where I actually come from because most of you know I'm not from America, I'm not from Europe, but I was born in Namibia, which is the neighbor country of South Africa. And then when I was very young, my parents and our whole family moved to South Africa. Now, I had the privilege of growing up with a father and a mother that really loved God. They were really true Christians, reborn Christians. My dad was a preacher and my mom was a teacher. But even though I grew up in a Christian home, I, I was never really a Christian because I didn't want to be a Christian. Which is interesting because I knew that there was a God, especially because I experienced how my father helped people who, who were Satanist ones and who wanted to come to God and people who were demon possessed. Even the police called him up sometimes and said, hey, here's a situation that we don't know what is going on and we can't control anything and there's some weird things happening here. And so they called my dad, my dad helped out a lot of people. The word spread a little bit and a lot of the times they would people would come to our house and uh, my, my father would help them and pray for them and cast out demons. And yes, demons do exist. The things that I experienced and heard and saw, not normal. Um, but I will leave that for another video. The thing that I experienced is how powerful God really is and that He is a reality just in that part alone. <laughs> There's a lot of other things I can talk about, but I'll make another video about that. But as time went on, I never really wanted to be a Christian fully. I believed in God, yes. Uh, I believe He existed, you know, but that doesn't make someone a Christian. So for me, um, I did not want to give my whole life to God. I wanted to live life my way, the way I wanted to do it, and I did not want to submit to the authority of who God really is. But uh, then something happened. When I was 12 years old, my brother and I, we played a little bit badminton in the, the backyard and um, I can't remember if it was him or me. It was One of us hit the, the little ball, you know, the, the birdie of at badminton on the roof of the house. And uh, of course, I was the one to go up without any shoes on, climbed on the roof to try and get the birdie back. And somehow I slipped and there was these electric wires that, that was going into the house. And I touched it and all I could remember was and I heard this the sound of zzzz. I, I couldn't move I couldn't do anything I couldn't scream there was nothing that I could do um, I just remembered that I was scared and I could see um, my, my, my eye the top orb was dark and I could see my shirt but I didn't even know if I was laying down or if I was standing up I had no idea what was going on and I tried to scream but this this was all I could do I couldn't do anything um, and then I, I, I saw myself here in school and I saw my life and I, it, it was such a weird experience. I, but I prayed and I said, God, look, if you would just save me here right now, I would live for you. That's what I prayed. And suddenly the electricity was gone. It was just gone. And, and it was impossible for me to be alive. But still, after that experience, I would say I'm a Christian, but you know, I, I wasn't convicted. I wasn't really changed in my heart. I would just say it and be like, oh, yeah, I have to kind of be a Christian. But I wasn't, you know? Then my brother died. Um, it was kind of a shock. I was 13 and uh, he was 21 at the age, but he was someone that I looked up to, you know? He would come up and pick us up at school. And at that time, the first cars with the electric windows would come out and I felt so cool and showing my friends, hey, that's my big brother. It's like I can see these things in, in my mind so clearly. But then suddenly, he was just gone. You know, he was shot in Johannesburg, killed. He was shot three times in his chest.
in a kitchen floor. And um, it, I was used to death because at this age I've lost most of my grandparents. So death wasn't something that was something that's new to me. Um, but when my brother died, he was still so young and I loved him so much. And uh, it was a big shock on our, our whole family. So it changed the way that I look at life and also at God because I didn't understand why he needed to die. He didn't. I just didn't understand it. And around this time, my dad left the church um, for, for a certain reason and he started to preach around and he even went to Netherlands and um, he kind of lived in faith where we relied on um, money from people that, that believed in what he was doing. And uh, my mom was a teacher but I mean, we were then four children and uh, we did not have enough money to be able to pay for the house so we had to leave the house and thankfully a friend of my dad allowed us to stay um, in his kind of backyard where he had a small house and we were cramped in, into that house and we were very poor. I remember these, the, there were times where we went to do grocery shopping and uh, I would ask my mom, mom can I have this chocolate this time? And I knew she would actually say no because every time she would say no. And then she would say the same thing and just say, Daniel, we don't have enough money to just buy the basic stuff. So I'm sorry, you can't. So my brother died, all well, my grandparents died. We, we started to get very poor and struggled just to go from one day to the next. And, and I didn't understand these things. And I, I started to ask God and I, I was getting angrier. I, I wouldn't say that to my parents or really, but I was, I, if God is God of love and, and um, why, does, why does he let these things happen to us? Especially to my mom and dad who really loves him and lives for him. Anyway, it, it was a tough time for us all, for our whole family. And I would still say to people that I'm a Christian, you know, even though deep down I knew I was not. Anyway, so I finished school, you know, and uh, having this, this experience of not being able to, to buy what I want and seeing my parents struggle and my brother struggle. I did not know what I wanted to study yet. So I thought, okay, look, I'm gonna go overseas. I'm gonna go to England. I'm gonna try to make a lot of money. So I went to England. I worked for a Scottish and Southern company there. I, I made a lot of money. So I went out and I used the money. I partied a lot. I chased girls. I drank a lot. From a worldly perspective, it would be a perfect life, you know? Girls, money. Uh, you're independent. You just you just go for it. But deep down, you know, there was this emptiness that it, it just did not go away. It didn't matter what I did. Uh, that emptiness just did not go away. And it was so interesting, you know. Even though I lived that way, I, I started to change myself, and I started to realize I'm becoming more arrogant. I'm starting to become more like mm, puffed up, you know, the self, me, 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 and. Uh, Man, I had a lot of excuses to justify it and the, the way that I've become, but looking back now, that person is so different from who I am today. Anyway, um, living that way, that perfect life with a lot of money and chasing girls and doing whatever I want, when I wanted to do it, it didn't fill this empty spot, this, this empty hole that I, that I had, um, where I, I think I was just looking for peace and I didn't find it and the one day I got this call from my dad and I remember the way that he talked was the same way that he talked when when my first brother passed away because he was the one that had to bring the news and he said Daniel I have very bad news he said um, Etienne your brother is in a car crash and uh, it's not good you know, I can remember it clearly. And I remember, wow, that, that feeling of the world just stopping. Uh, because my brother, he was, he was like a twin, you know. We even looked a lot alike when we were younger. We did a lot of things together. We went to school together. We played games together. Man. But uh, then a big truck just came from the side and it hit the car. So I'm not going to go into detail here, but um, he was brain dead. So I flew back to South Africa and uh, I remember uh, Sorry <clears throat> I remember I walked down the aisle and I could see my sister standing there 
um, near the hospital room and she just looked at me and ran and, and hugged and I, I knew, man, he really is brain dead, he, he really is not here probably anymore. And then my family just said, hey, Daniel, we just kept the machines alive, uh, um, the machines on him, so his body is still alive, but he's brain dead, so uh, we just kept him alive for you to say goodbye. And uh, I walked in and I asked could I have some privacy with him, so I, I draw the curtains closed and I sat down there and I looked at him and his body. At that time he was working out a lot, you know, and it's, it looked really good. And um, I remember looking at it and, and touching his hand and talking to him and just saying things like, hey, if you can, just wake up, you know? I was, I was a little bit in, in denial. And uh, of course he didn't wake up. And uh, I talked to him a little bit and then, Sorry, it's a little bit hard. And, and then I started to talk to God because, you know, I knew He existed. And um, I started to ask Him this question. Why did He take my first brother? Why did He take my second brother now? Why do we have to grow up so poor? Why did all of these things have to happen? There's a lot of things that I talked to Him that, that I'm not going to share in this video. But I, I started to ask all these questions and I started to get more angry. And uh, we had this conversation. I can't even remember how long it was, but I just remember there was this one moment where it just stopped. And it's as if I could hear God talk to me. It's not like a physical voice, but it deep in my heart, my, my soul, my spirit. Daniel, you ask all these questions, but what are you doing with your life? And it's like I can see my own life from his perspective. This brother, the second brother who died, he he had... <laughs> he was probably the best of us. <sighs> the way he lived his life and uh, the way he talked to people. He was the good one. <laughs> He was the good one and now he's gone and uh, I was not the person who I became and going out drinking so much, becoming rude, becoming arrogant, becoming a kind of... Anyway, so I started to see this, I started to hear this from God and I started to see things differently. It's as if God opened my eyes to the truth of my life of the whole world, of the whole puzzle, and that I'm just so small. And how my brother, he lived a good life, he loved God, he had a relationship with him, and God just took him home, you know, where there's no sadness, no pain, no suffering, no nothing. And uh, I started to think, hey, you know, God blessed me because I still had all these years with him. We were five, you know, <laughs> one sister, four brothers. And uh, we were blessed. We were blessed with the parents that we have. I started to look at things so differently. The truth just came and came and came. And it continued for a few weeks and a few months actually after that. And uh, I couldn't stop it. The truth of all of these things of my life started to over overwhelm the feelings I had. It became more rational. It became things that I couldn't run away from. And God, He, he didn't stop. <laughs> So things started to make sense. I started to look at the eternal things instead of, instead of the temporary things. I started to realize that I needed to change my life because if I die, where would I go? You know, And it doesn't matter how I feel like about things, it, it, it's about the truth. And uh, God didn't leave me alone, He kept on. And this is what the Bible talks about, that God reveals Himself to those who seek Him. And I started to seek Him a lot. And I said, well, God, okay, I know it's not about religion then, it's about a relationship with you. I started to read the Bible. I started to look at other religions as well, just for to answer my own questions. And so many things happened in, in, in a few months. Um, and I came to a point where I realized I need to submit. I need to, I need to change who I am. Because if I continue to live the way that I am, what is going to be the result? 
it's just gonna continue in this endless circle of trying to be happy with worldly things, you know? Um, drinks and money and it doesn't matter what this world could offer, it can never fill this, this hole that I have. And so I knelt down and I prayed and I said, God, okay, I will start this relationship with you and actually I need it because the person I am and all the bad things that I've done, I can't change that myself. I need you to change that. And he did. <laughs> wow. It was like a miracle that happened because the, the person who I was then, who I am now, whew, so different. So he changed my heart. He started this journey with me. Um, that's what the Bible talks about. You have to become reborn. You have to become a new person. Some of these things I never understood before. My dad used to talk about these things, my mom and at the church, and, and I could never really understand it until these things started to happen to me. And, and uh, the, God says, when you become a true Christian, He sends you the Holy Spirit, because spiritually you're dead. So He opens you up your eyes and He sends you the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, which is God, reveals these things in, uh, to you. And I started to look at life differently. And I started to believe in God as I believe like in the sun. Not that it exists, but that through it, I could see the reality of life, of everything, of me. And all the puzzles started to, to make a bit more sense. And uh, this death of my second brother also just made me realize so quickly that life is just like this. I could die tomorrow, I could die next week. All of us will die sometime. Every second that goes on that clock is a second closer to your death and mine. Anyway, so I surrendered to God and I said, God, I'm sorry. I am repenting of all my sins, everything that I've done before. I'm sorry for it. Start with me now a new relationship. Make me a new man and continue this life with me because I don't want to do it without you. You created me. You know who I am. You know why you've made me and you've given me everything that I have. All the talents I have, everything that I have comes from you. Teach me now how to move forward and to live this life more powerfully with the way that you want me to do it. And for the first time, I felt the change deep in my spirit, in my core of who I am. I have, for, I had for the first time peace. Even though my brothers died, I have peace, you know? I'm still sad, as you can see now here, I'm just talking to you guys, because those memories, and of course I miss them. Um, that's not gonna go away, but I have peace. And that peace surpasses all understanding. Even myself, I still can't understand it. And I can't fully explain to you why I have peace. I lost my father a few years ago to cancer, multiple myeloma cancer. And um, even at that time, I had peace. I was content with it because I believe that God knows what he's doing, you know? And because I could start to see this, this puzzle more and more and more every day as I grow spiritually and read my Bible with him. So let me ask you, where are you going when you die? Did you know there's 150,000 people that die every day? You might think, hey, I'm young, I'm still a teenager, I have my whole life in front of you. Both of my brothers were 21 and they died. Their life were cut short. There's 3,000 teenagers that dies every day. Now, I'm not trying to scare you, I'm just trying to give you the reality, the truth that you live in. Why? Because I care about you. If I didn't care about you, I wouldn't say anything at all. So let me ask you this. Do you believe that you are good enough to go to heaven? Some of you say, well, yes. Some of you say, no. Some of you say, I don't know. Um, well, let me answer it this way. We sometimes think that we're good enough because we compare ourselves to other people and we're like, hey, I'm not too bad. I'm not like that drug addict. I'm not like this alcoholic. I'm not like this pedophile. I'm not like this murderer. But you see, sin is sin and nobody is good enough. God says that all have fallen short of the glory of God is because if we compare ourselves to other people, yeah, we might like look like okay, right? But if you compare yourself to God, He is holy, He is perfect, and we are not. So nobody is good enough for God. But because God is love and He's full of grace, He gave us a way out. Jesus, who is perfect, took the punishment for our sins on the cross. He suffered and took our place. And if you accept it, you will be saved. So you have to pray and you have to repent and say, God, I'm sorry for all of my sins. And then you have to trust in Jesus and not in yourself to be saved and to go to heaven. Well, for some, this might be a little bit complicated. So let me explain it to you this way. If you did something, if you stole something, 
you go to the court, there's a judge, there's rules, right? So the judge, you're gonna go to the judge and say, judge, look, I'm sorry for what I've done, I'll never do it again, so please let me go free, free you know? Even if you did a murder or whatever you did, uh, the judge is gonna say, well, of course you have to feel sorry, but I'm, I can't just let you go. You did a crime, there needs a punishment. And so in the same way, God is the judge of the whole world. And nobody's perfect. We all have sinned against his law. And so here's the thing. He sent Jesus, which is perfect, to die in your place. So he took your punishment on himself on the cross. And so if you accept it, then you can be saved if you trust in Jesus. And that is why the crucifixion on the cross of Jesus Christ is so important. So you have to repent, meaning you have to ask God for forgiveness for all of your sins. And you have to turn away from your sins towards God and trust Him. If you do that, He will change your heart. It's a miracle that really happens because He's the only one that can change the human nature. And He will change your heart and He will send you the His Holy Spirit, which will come and live inside of your spirit. And He will help you and guide you to live for God. And that is when your life actually really starts, when your eyes start to open up spiritually and you see things differently and your mind is being transformed. You start to see the truth of yourself, of who you are, who you were created to be, of Him, of the world and your purpose in it. Now this is very hard to explain to somebody who's, who's never experienced this before, but He changed my life to such an extent where He gives me strength on a daily basis that is inexplainable. It, it just it surpasses all understanding, the peace and the strength that I get from Him on a daily basis, even in difficult times. Some people on the other channel, on the Model Lifestyle, ask me, Daniel, how do you deal with certain things like depression or anxiety or how do you do this and this? And, and most of all of these things comes from God, from the Holy Spirit that lives in me and that gives me that peace and that strength to be able to conquer everything because God helps me to see the whole picture of life and not just one perspective of me, Daniel, of the things that I want, but to understand things by seeing the whole picture. So if you feel like God is talking to you right now through me and you want to give God a chance, you want to become a Christian and having a real relationship with God, not just a religion, but a real relationship, then pray with me now and do it today because you don't know where you will be tomorrow. Time is not on our side. Every day that goes by is a day closer to your death and mine. If you want to change your life, if you want to do this, if you want to give God a chance, pray with me now. God, I am sorry for all the bad things I did. I repent of all my sins and I ask you to come into my life. Jesus, I believe that you carried my sins on the cross in my place. And I want to thank you for your mercy and grace. Change my heart make me a new creation and show me how to grow more spiritually with you every day. Amen. If you just prayed with me and you really meant it, then you are now part of the family. You are now God's child. You are now a real reborn Christian. Now that doesn't mean you just go back to your old life. Now it means that you're learning how to grow spiritually, how to become stronger in Christ. This is where your life actually really starts. Now you're going to learn who you really are in God and who He made you to be even before you were born. Now you got to start reading your Bible and also find good Christian friends, brothers and sisters in Christ that really cares about you to help you grow on this new journey. You can also check out some of my other videos that will help and guide you as we go along. And uh, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. And remember, I love you, God does too, and we will talk soon. Bye. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee.